The 2023-24 season will always be a special one for Bayer Leverkusen. They not only ended Bayern Munich's 11-year dominance of the Bundesliga, but they became the newest invincibles in the process, becoming the first ever Bundesliga team to go unbeaten in an entire season. They also surpassed the European record previously held by Portuguese giants Benfica, who went 49 games unbeaten between 1963 and 1965, and have now set their own European record of 51 games in a row without loss across all competitions. Leverkusen achieved an incredible feat, and this wouldn't have been possible without, yes, you are hearing this right, Kai Havertz, the current Arsenal striker and previously labelled flop by some. So how did he do it? How did Kai Havertz make Bayer Leverkusen invincible? Kai Havertz joined Bayer Leverkusen at the age of 11 in the summer of 2010, and he enjoyed a rapid progression, which earned him the nickname of the young German Messi. He excelled as a left-footed playmaker and faced two types of challenges. The first challenge being that he was one of the smallest children in the academy, and then his second challenge was that when he started to grow, his growth spurts interfered with training. Still, Havertz continued to dazzle, and by the age of 17 in the 2017-18 season, he made his senior team debut for Leverkusen. He was impressive that season, scoring four goals and six assists in 24 Bundesliga games. In the 2018-19 season, Havertz's growth was astronomical. He showed that he was going to be a lethal goalscorer, netting 20 goals and producing seven assists in 42 games. His goal-scoring exploits earned him the award of the highest-scoring teenager in a single Bundesliga campaign and also the runner-up for the German Footballer of the Year, which went to Marco Reus. Havertz showed in the next season that what he achieved the previous one wasn't a fluke, scoring 18 goals and producing nine assists in 45 games. He was so crucial and had proven he could handle the pressure of competing, as at 20 years old he had racked up 100 appearances and he had also became one of the youngest players ever to captain Bayer Leverkusen. His performance and elite mentality generated interest across Europe, with Chelsea, Bayern Munich, Barcelona and Real Madrid all interested at the time. Eventually, Havertz went on to Chelsea for a fee of £62 million, £71 million with add-ons. Selling your best player at the time doesn't usually benefit you. The player achieved 77 goal contentions in 150 games, but Havertz went on to create a new chapter of his career, and his move set Leverkusen on the unintended path of dominance. He set them on the path of being invincible and going unbeaten in the Bundesliga, and becoming the new holders of the European record of 51 games in a row without loss across all competitions in the 23-24 season. How? Well, Paired with excellent recruitment from the club's point of view, the Havertz sale provided Leverkusen with the money which they spent excellently on certain players, which we will get onto next. So immediately after Havertz left in the 2020-21 season, Leverkusen signed two of the key players that would help them dominate later on. They signed Jeremy Frimpong and Patrick Schick. The two had an immediate impact on the team. Frimpong played right back and sometimes right midfield, with Schick playing centre forward, scoring nine goals in 29 appearances in his first season. However, these performances pale in comparison to them being key parts of Leverkusen's rampage just a few seasons later. That season, Leverkusen ended up in seventh position, winning 14 games, drawing 10 and losing 10. They went on to hire Swiss coach Gerardo Seone to manage the team for the 21-22 season. They signed a couple of players including Amine Adil and none other than Robert Andrik. Leverkusen performed excellently that season and they were slowly becoming the juggernaut that would later sweep the Bundesliga. Encouraged by the team's performance, Leverkusen made more signings, which included that of another attacker, Adam Chlozek, who scored five goals in 29 matches in the 22-23 season. Leverkusen sacked Seone in the 22-23 season after eight games to hire Xabi Alonso. They had a resurgence and ended up in sixth position. And then in the 23-24 window, they signed Nathan Teller, Victor Boniface, 
Granit Xhaka and other players and went on to dominate the league without losing. Florian Wirtz played a big part in Leverkusen's wonder season, but he didn't have to do it alone. There were other key figures in the team that played a monumental part in Leverkusen's achievement, and one of them was Grimaldo, who could also be the most impactful signing have made since Havertz left. So why is this so? They got him on a free transfer, and he immediately became a star for the team, announcing himself in the league in a pressure-filled match against Bayern. Grimaldo, who Leverkusen would come to rely on in dead ball situations, scored a sensational free kick in that Bayern game, which ended in a two-all draw. Grimaldo, like Frimpong, is both an attacking outlet who helped stretch the play for Leverkusen and a defender who closed opponents down. In attack, Grimaldo played with the instincts of an attacking midfielder. He wasn't great at dribbling like Frimpong was, but what he lacked in dribbling he had in abundance when it came to chance creation. The wingback created 78 chances for Leverkusen and 13 of those chances became assists. What's more, Grimaldo was lethal in front of goal, scoring 10 goals in the Bundesliga. So in total, he had 23 goal contributions for Leverkusen. That's even greater than what some forwards have. He had the most goal contributions for the entire team in the league at 23 and also had the highest average rating for the season out of all the players. Victor Boniface, the striker Leverkusen signed, only scored four goals more than Grimaldo. Now, to be fair, Boniface spent a considerable amount of time on the sidelines. Boniface doesn't limit his impact for Leverkusen to goals, though. He's a hard-working striker who loves to press opponents' defenders, hold up play for his team, and also be heavily involved in Leverkusen's transitional play. Boniface brings other players into the game with his approach and is also selfless when the situation requires, providing eight assists for Leverkusen throughout the season. Jeremy Frimpong, who Leverkusen signed almost immediately when Havertz left the club in the summer of 2020, what to say? Well, without him, Leverkusen would have been severely predictable. Frimpong had been alternating between the right midfield and right back roles, but Alonso saw his potential as a right wing back and decided to use him there because he noticed one thing. What was that? Stamina. Frimpong was like having N'Golo Kante as a wing back. And with his stamina, Frimpong made him devastating in attack and solid in defence. He played a marauding wing back, bombing along the wings, or he would cut inside and offer an option in the midfield. He provided dynamism for Leverkusen and he achieved impressive levels of output while doing so, scoring nine goals and providing nine assists throughout the season. And there's more. Frimpong's game goes beyond his goals and assists. Teams find it difficult to contain him due to his pace and dribbling. Frimpong completed about 48 dribbles that season and this is just one arm of his creativity. The other arm lies in his ability to create chances. So how good was he for Leverkusen in that regard? Simply sensational. The wing-back created around 45 chances for Leverkusen. With him on the pitch, there's always a sense that the team would pull something off. He and the other wing-back, Alejandro Grimaldo, had an amazing chemistry and kept opponents guessing. One amazing thing about Leverkusen is how the team doesn't depend on a single outlet for goals, assists or chance creation. Centre forward Patrick Schick was one of the players that carried the burden of goal scoring and was able to score seven goals, which was impressive considering he only had 13 shots on target. Now his contribution may not be as robust as some of the other players in the squad, but he showed he could be a dependable presence. The same goes for forward Amine Adil, who scored four goals, created 21 chances and produced six assists in 23 appearances for Leverkusen in the season. Adil has got some neat passes in his locker, but when it comes to slick passes in Leverkusen in the 23-24 season, well, the name that surely stands out is central midfielder Granit Xhaka. Xhaka left Arsenal as he was deemed surplus to requirements for the Gunners. However, when he arrived at Leverkusen, he was a man reborn. How did he manage it? Xhaka was made an important member of the squad, and with that feeling of importance came a desire to play his best football. Xhaka became a Rodri-esque figure for Leverkusen, dictating the tempo of the game for the club. 
off the ball, Shaka worked tirelessly. He helped screen the defence from the opposition and he did it in a way that most people wouldn't have predicted. The former Arsenal captain, famed for his fiery tackles, brought a calmer side to Leverkusen and was the key to everything, playing the most minutes out of all the other players in the team. He also took on a role of a leader in the team and provided an inspiring presence for the other players of the squad. Speaking of those other players, there were two other guys who had also performed excellently well in Leverkusen's exceptional season, Nathan Teller and Jonas Hoffman. Hoffman wasn't a starter in the team, with the likes of Florian Wirtz being so good that it was just impossible for him not to start. However, when he was called upon, Hoffman kept things simple, tidy and yet spectacular. The same goes for Nathan Teller, who also didn't feature as much due to the wealth of talent Leverkusen have in those forward positions. Leverkusen had an amazing 23-24 season, and they owe it all to the sale of their highly regarded talent, Kai Havertz. Alonso and his staff have turned players like Jeremy Frimpong, Alejandro Grimaldo, Jonathan Tarr, and of course Florian Wirtz into high-quality players, even world-class players. They have even managed to get the best out of the former Arsenal player, the hot-tempered Granit Xhaka. But will Leverkusen be able to hang on to their current top players? And if they do sell a top player again, well, who knows what might happen?